A man will learn his fate today for a double murder in Spokane Valley. It happened in the early morning hours of 2016. We will tell you what is expected today in court. Rain is back in the forecast for our Friday morning. I'll let you know how long it'll last and when temperatures will start cooling down. The devastation that Hurricane Dorian left in the Bahamas brings up the question, should there be more severe hurricanes than Category 5? We're connecting the dots. The Spokane County Interstate Fair opens today. Get your phones out and ready to vote. We want to know what is your favorite thing about the fair. A look back in time. The pavilion has been an icon here for decades. And today we're taking a look at what it was like 30 years ago. Six a.m. now on our Friday morning. Welcome back to Up with Krem as we make our way to the end of the work week. Oh. We're focusing now on the weekend, right? All we've been talking about is how <laughs> tired we are this morning. It's a little it's, rough. Yeah, for us, but, it, we're but doing it's it. Friday. You know, we're here. We're so close we to the made weekend, it, right? Exactly. That's going to get us through. Is that the weekend is in <laughs> sight? So thanks so much for waking up with us. I'm Jen York. I'm Evan Narani. And I'm Dana Marie McNichol. But boy, Evan, we have some rain to talk about this morning. A real big shift in our weather. Yeah, pattern. definitely a change. And no more 80s and 90s. We're seeing upper 60s and 70s oh. for the forecast highs. Yeah, a lot of green yeah. on the screen. A lot behind of green us here. on the screen. Let's get to it. Let's uh, start off the forecast with uh, what we've got in store for the next uh, couple days here. And really the last several several hours for us on satellite radar have been giving us a good idea of what the weekend's going to look like. So we are expecting a good portion of the weekend to include some showers, but today and Sunday are going to be your prime days for it. We're not looking at much in terms of precipitation for your Saturday. Things will dry out quite a bit. A little bit of a closer look shows you how Spokane County is pretty much divided in half. Southern half seen plenty of rain. Northern half still awaiting those showers as they push farther north. Expect rain in the forecast all the way through about noon and then by 1 p.m. we start to see things dry up. Overcast skies from about 1 p.m. through 6 p.m. and then by 7 p.m. a little bit of the sun may come out, but otherwise expect the day to generally just include those overcast skies. We are still keeping an eye on Hurricane Dorian, now only five miles northeast. Keeping an eye on whether the National Hurricane Center says that this is technically landfall, as all that's required is that the center of that eye make its way over land. So right now, five miles northeast uh, of North Carolina, it's moving at 14 miles an hour, so pretty quickly uh, up the coast and then pushing off away from the U.S., although pushing towards portions of Canada once it makes its way all the way up. Uh, so we're still keeping an eye on this, of course, tracking uh, sustained winds of 90 miles an hour, gusts of 115, as plenty of advisories are still in place, warning residents to stay inside and be prepared for that life-threatening storm surge. Back to you, Jen. All right, Evan, thank you. About 300 homes, 300,000 homes rather, are without power this morning in North and South Carolina. Dorian is lashing some of North Carolina's outer bands with strong wind. That's where we see this live look. You can see, boy, it still looks pretty dangerous out there on the water. A lot of white caps this morning. That area also seeing heavy rain and a dangerous storm surge. Taking another look at the coastline here, pretty murky outside, high surf. Authorities warned all coastal residents to evacuate. And further north, leaders in Virginia have also issued evacuation notices. Experts say hurricane watches are in effect this weekend for areas as far north as Canada. Dorian also caused damage further inland. Experts say it spawned about 15 tornadoes yesterday along the east coast. I just can't catch a break here. One even wiped out an RV park in North Carolina. And cleanup is underway this morning in Florida and Georgia. That area escaped a direct hit, but still saw extreme weather conditions. Dorian caused power outages and some flooding there. Meanwhile, a massive rescue and relief effort is underway in the Bahamas, where there was widespread devastation. The hurricane decimated parts of the Bahamas for 48 hours, killing at least 30 people. Authorities say that number is expected to rise dramatically. At this point in time, we're getting, we're going past chaos at this point. It is no forward to say better. It's getting worse. So we need any help we can get. Experts say cleanup in the Bahamas is expected to top $7 billion. 
Here at 604, we're tracking breaking news this morning from here at home. Police arrested a suspect following a car chase through Spokane Valley this morning. Crime News Nicole Hernandez is at that scene with details. Yeah, good morning, Jen. So you can see kind of the damage here where this chase ended. There's dirt all over the floor and there's these bricks and you can even see a piece of the car's hubcap here left over. Right now we're just across the street from the Fred Meyer on Sprague, just east of Sullivan right now. And an officer uh, tried to pull over a minivan at some point here in, in Spokane Valley and that that driver of that minivan decided to drive off instead of stopping for that officer and that started a police chase and this, this it ended here on spray with a uh, spike strip under the woman's tires. Once they got the car to stop, the woman was cooperative and they did take her into custody. Live here in Spokane Valley, I'm Nicole Hernandez. Back to you, Jen. All right, Nicole, thank you so much. 605 now. It has been more than three years since a double murder in Spokane Valley. Today, the man at the center of the crime will learn his fate. A judge is expected to sentence Gilberto Delgado today for the murders of his ex-girlfriend and her brother. Authorities arrested Delgado in Idaho and later transferred him back to Washington. Sentencing is set for 2 p.m. this afternoon at the Spokane County Courthouse. You can find updates today on Crem.com and the Crem2 mobile app. The group that got Medicaid expansion on the Idaho ballot last year is working on another initiative. Reclaim Idaho members want to raise money for public schools by increasing taxes on corporations and the wealthy. Supporters say the increase will generate $170 million for K-12 public schools. It would also reduce the need for school levies. If approved, the group will need to get 55,000 voter signatures to get it on the 2020 ballot. A new chauffeur service is coming to Spokane. Guardian Transportation has been around for about one year. It started in Sandpoint. It gives service members a chance to use their skills to benefit the community, but it's not a typical Uber or Lyft. Services include roadside assistance, personal security, service to and from the airport, or even just a downtown on the weekends. It's all done by drivers who have military or security experience. It will be open for rides next week. The company does not have an app yet. Instead, all of its services are listed on its website. Idaho drivers were ranked the seventh worst in the country. Eesh. This is according to a 2018 national report. This ranking is based off wrecks, speeding tickets, DUIs, and citations. Hayden made the top five worst cities to drive in. Eesh. But Moscow and Lewiston were in the top five best cities. And the long-awaited day is finally here. The historic Riverfront Park U.S. Pavilion in Spokane reopens to the public today. The grand reopening festivities start today at 4 p.m. and continue through tomorrow. The celebration will include fun for the entire family. The biggest part of the reopening will be the light show from the new illumination blades on top of the pavilion's net structure. That light show begins tonight at 8 p.m. But if you keep your eyes peeled early this morning, you might get to see them testing the lights a little bit ahead of time. That is your morning rush. Stories making headlines in the inland northwest and around the nation. Let us know what's happening in your neighborhood by using the hashtag up with creme. It is 6.08 now. The annual Spokane County Interstate Fair kicks off today. It runs for about a week and a half. Creme Two's Dana Marie McNichol is live in the newsroom now to break down what the fair has to offer. Good morning. Good morning, Jen. Well, yes, we're excited about the Spokane County Fair coming and it kicks off the end of summer, really. You can visit the Spokane County Interstate Fair and there's plenty of time to do so. It starts today and goes until the 15th. But before we get into details about the fair, take out your phones and vote in our live poll this morning. We're asking you what's your favorite thing about the fair, the rides, the food, the prizes, animals. About 50% of you right now are saying animals. 50% of you are saying fried food. It's a good, it's a good split down the middle. Well, the fair is taking place at the fair and expo center in Spokane Valley. The theme of this year is a fun one. It's pirates of the carrots and beans. Parking is $5 a day. And when, when it comes to buying tickets, you can purchase your tickets in advance on TicketWest.com or at the fair. 
Tickets range from daily admission to tickets for events happening at the grandstand. Fun fair events include a rodeo and a number of concerts, including Trace Atkins and Foreigner. There will also be a tractor pull and demolition derby, in addition to all the booths, rides, and wonderful fried food. And whether you are a fan of fair food, rides, or games, make sure to make it out to the Spokane County Interstate Fair for a fun time for the whole family. You have until September 15th to go. And Make sure to vote in our live poll this morning. Let us know what you're most excited for. We'll have those results for you in the next half hour. We'll send it back to you, Jen. Dana Marie, I see that I'm not alone and that most people say fried food is their favorite part about the fair. Yeah, I, I tasted enough fried food to last me a year at Pig Out in the Park. So, <laughs> And they're doing Fair a farm enough. to table um, event at the fair as well. So maybe we'll be covering that next week, a more healthy way to enjoy the fair. All right, I guess it's all in moderation, right? There you go. I still have to get my elephant ear. It's my one thing. It's so good. Oh, I'm so hungry. <laughs> <laughs> all right, Dan Marie, thank you so much. It is 610 now on a Friday morning. Well, so they say you might want to hold off from using mouthwash before hitting the gym. Pretty weird, right? Well, it turns out mouthwash can actually lower the benefits of exercise. This is according to a new study by Free Radical Biology and Medicine. Doctors say it can actually lead to high blood pressure. They say it has to do with the chemicals absorbed in your mouth. They say it can reduce the blood pressure lowering effects that you just worked so hard for at the gym by 60%. See, Evan, this is why I just don't hit the gym. So, yeah, right. so I'm just going to avoid it, but I love why I don't use mouth much, great I dental guess. health. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> All right, no need to debate who is the favorite child in the family anymore. It turns out it might just be the family pet. According to new research, <clears throat> excuse me, one third of parents say their pet is their favorite child. Parents have even brought or bought rather a <laughs> gift for their pet more recently than a gift for their children. That one's not hard to believe, right? No, my they mom, don't talk back to you as teenagers. My mom calls our family dog her other son. <laughs> so, as long sense. as you're the favorite son, though, right? I don't or, know. I don't know. <laughs> it's debatable. I'll have to ask. <laughs> All right, this one's uh, pretty squirrely here. According to a new study, squirrels go nuts for gossip. How many puns do you think we can get in this story? <laughs> so it's not your typical lunchtime gossip. However, experts say the critters eavesdrop on birds to find out if a dangerous predator is nearby. You gotta give them that. They're pretty smart then to be doing that. Yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> Squirrels can find food under a feet of snow. Wow. So they store 80% of their nuts that they forget about. <laughs> under the snow. Yeah. Yeah. If you weren't worth this uh, at five, Evan, share with us your yeah. random squirrel factoid. Squirrels forget about 80% of the nuts that they hide. Hmm. They forget the location of them. And Evan's been holding on to this information Not, for some time. I watch a lot of stand-up comedy, and this was actually on one of Sarah Silverman's stand-up comedy specials. I think it's specials. such a funny but it's fact. A great, yeah, it's, I, it's one of my favorites. Imagine I mean, if knew? we couldn't remember where we put anything. 80% of the things <laughs> we, we would go crazy. <laughs>